Hello and welcome to the Thursday, October 10th, 2024 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Xavier today did a write-up on some follow-up activity that he observed in a system that he infected with PerfCTL. PerfCTL, at least I think that's how you pronounce it, is malware that was recently heavily discussed in the press as sort of a stealthy Linux malware. It can install a rootkit if it's running as a root. But in Xavier's case, actually, he just ran as a regular user, which does remove some of the stealth features, but still enables the malware to set up a backdoor and communicate via Tor. About half an hour after Xavier infected his system, Actual access commenced across the back door and NetHacker installed Trufflehawk. Trufflehawk is actually often used as a security tool, but of course can be used offensively. It scans files for credentials and that is sort of what it is uh, looking for here. Also, it then downloaded an interesting file with, as Xavier says, about 19,000 different regular expressions looking for various credential files and configuration files and the like. Interesting a piece of follow-up activity. Not really clear if this was automated or not. Looks a little bit more automated to me, but uh, interestingly, Trufflehawk was actually executed with the help parameter as Xavier points out, which usually is really more used if you're actually running it interactively. The malware itself was initially more described as a crypto coin miner, and that's a sort of another action that it does uh, perform. It has a number of techniques that are quite interesting to sort of keep itself more stealthy, like for example, ceasing activity if a user logs in interactively. But interesting to see that uh, as uh, Xavier has observed, it also exfiltrates credentials like any other info stealer. We got an interesting article on SecureList by Alexander Kurchev from Kaspersky. The article describes malware that actually installs a SIEM agent on your system. So in some ways you may say, hey, does it improve security? No, that's not the goal here. They're installing the open source SIEM Wazoo agent. Great software, really like it, also have used it myself. But uh, the purpose here is really to instrument your network to make it easier for them to then install additional malware. Like many of these sort of... Uh, extended response agents or whatever you want to call them. They have the ability to reach out to systems and well, the intent is to install additional software, fix configuration problems and the like, but well, they can of course always be used to install malware as well, which happened in this particular case. The initial infection happened via ads that were placed on the Russian search engine Yandex. Now, given that this article was written by researchers from Kaspersky, they of course focused more on the Russian victims here of this particular attack, but they believe that it was a global attack and not just targeting Russia. If you all of a sudden do see Vazoo on your system, well, better double check what it's doing there. And Matthias Poroli with ESET uh, wrote up a piece of malware that they have found they're calling Golden Jackal that uh, was found on some government uh, systems and was able to bridge air gaps. Now, we always talk a lot about you know, some of the weird things that people propose to bridge air gaps, like you know, blinking lights, electromagnetic uh, emissions and such. But as so often, Golden, Golden Jackal comes back to a simple USB stick that is being used here to transfer data from an air gap system to a non-air gap system where it is then being executed. The person moving the USB stick usually has no idea what's going on here, but in the end, the air gap, as at SCOTUS often describes it, becomes just a high latency link. 
And for all 40 gate users, uh, vulnerability CVE 2024-2311-3 that impacts 40 OS 7.0 and later, as well as a couple of other uh, products uh, from 40 gate is now actively being exploited. A patch was released back in February. So you better have it patched by now given the history of the exploitation of some of these vulnerabilities but uh, definitely double check and make sure that your 40 os devices are properly patched and that's it for today thanks again for listening remember we do have our API and microservices workshop, free workshop on Tuesday, October 15th. And well, it starts at 10 a.m. Eastern. So talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.